Jonathan Swain. Welcome to you. Uh, no change there from Michel Barnier. What did you, do you think he's being reasonable? Well, at least he's been consistent all along. <laughs> Uh, that has been clear. I have no enthusiasm whatsoever for the withdrawal agreement, but recognising that they were never going to change it, I have voted for it on three occasions on the grounds that I believe that the real choice facing us is not withdrawal agreement versus no deal, it's withdrawal agreement versus no Brexit. And given that choice, I'll vote for the withdrawal agreement. Why, why do you think no deal is, is unobtainable? Well, I think, actually, given at the outset Ms., uh, the Prime Minister didn't, didn't believe that a majority of 15 was going to be enough to deliver her Brexit means Brexit uh, of Florence and Lancaster House, after the election, without a majority at all, I think the reality has been there was never going to be a possibility of getting a no-deal Brexit past this Parliament. And so it has proved we have now legislated to prevent a no-deal no Brexit. My constituents continue to write to me demanding that we leave with no deal. They didn't vote for a deal, they voted oh. to leave the European Union, get on with it. I can't deliver that for them. I did suggest some months ago to the Prime Minister that she might prorogue Parliament oh. in order to get her way. Uh, I didn't seriously believe that she would do so. It's very difficult in a parliamentary yeah. democracy to govern without Parliament. Charles I tried but, it, and uh, it didn't do I mean, well. It, well, you know, you mentioned Charles I, and, th and this really is, you know, a fundamental argument about who's in charge. Is it the majority in Parliament, elected representatives, uh, or is it uh, a vote in, in a referendum? Well, the proof is in the pudding that Parliament has legislated and legislation trumps everything, including a referendum. It might not be yeah. what should happen, but it is what well, has do you think, happened. Do you think it's what should, what, it, is, it is what shouldn't happen? I mean, surely, I mean, you're a parliamentarian. I mean, it's good, isn't it, that Parliament is taking control? Uh, <laughs> I think that given that the, this was a matter that was handed by Parliament to the people for a decision, uh, then Parliament ought to abide by the decision of the people. But the reality is that the, the, the different members of Parliament have taken a different point of view, and it's no good, you know, name-calling, shouting traitor and cheat and, and all the rest. The fact is that members of Parliament faithfully reflect the divisions among the voters that elect them. Uh, and. The reality is we have a divided, divided yeah. nation, there is a divided parliament, and I'm confident that overwhelmingly, irrespective of personal or party interest, most members of parliament have reached different conclusions about what is best for the national oh. interest. I mean, you're backing the withdrawal uh, deal with, with, with regret, if I can put it that way. If it doesn't get through, this Brexit is probably going to get even further from what you'd like, isn't it? It will. Uh, I don't like the idea of a customs union, which was Bar Barnier was uh, uh, touting, um, and indeed is a, what, what Labour is bringing to the table. I don't like it at all. But hey, we're in a customs union now. We're alive, we're kicking. Yeah. Um, the customs union that would be on offer would be significantly worse, at least in theory. Um, it would be all give and no take we would literally be traded. The Europe, it would be open to the European Union to offer a third country access to our markets as part of a trade deal with no reciprocal access for us to their markets. Oh. Whether that would happen is another matter, but it's certainly possible in theory. I'm just reading your, your latest sit rep. These are what you send these out to your constituents. I put, well, I, they're, they're published in um, uh, the local paper, um, yeah. and they're also put on my website for those who don't by yeah. the local paper. And you say that political independence and a measure of economic freedom will be intoxicatingly liberating and will inexorably lead to demands for more. So that, that's basically it's the sovereignty argument. The, the important thing is to get out, is to get out from that, you know, relentless move to political integration. You know, for years, people have stopped me in Station Road, New Milton, my principal um, uh, residential town, and said, Mr Swain, we were robbed in 1975. We thought we were joining a common market, but it turned out to be a super state. 
if we can get out of the super state, I think most people oh. can live with the common market. It was never my choice. I voted no in 75. I thought it was the wrong market, the wrong club. Oh. But I think that's where the most of the, the voters are. What about the material well-being of, of your constituents? I mean, will they be better off? Will, will they uh, have the same levels of employment if we leave without a deal? My motivation for being a strong Brexiteer for 44 years is based, one, on my dislike of political integration, but two, on my belief that we would be better off economically out. Now, I suspect that where, where we're getting to now is sacrificing what would have been the economic benefits of Brexit. But, hey, we've sacrificed those for 44 years and we're doing OK. Desmond Swain, thank you very much indeed.